A wise woman of great ingenuity traveled the paths of literature, weaving essays of innumerable wisdom on a myriad of mundane matters. With tireless zeal and a muse that seemed never to desert her, she gave birth to works that captivated the hearts and minds of all who contemplated them. However, under the eternal cycle of the sun and the moon, she found herself in a veil of creative stagnation, an inspiration as fleeting as the shadows at noon. She sought counsel in the spines of ancient tomes and in the recesses of vast knowledge, but the ecstasy of revelation did not come to her. On the brink of a chasm of despair, her troubled spirit yearned for a breath of renewal. For a moment that seemed like an eternity, she hovered on the edge of capitulation. But then, in a sudden flash of insight, she chose to release the reins of her own restlessness, turning to other dances of life. And on an unpretentious pilgrimage through a forest where silence spoke, stripped of any intent to weave words or nurture literary aspirations, a vision was gifted to her, pure and unexpected. The writer then realized the sacred paradox, in the fervent effort for productivity, she had bound herself, in surrender, she freed herself. This is the essence of what an oracle of thought called the law of the reverse effect, by consciously striving for something, with hands too avid, the less we will be able to hold it. Let's see another example that will enrich our souls. A merchant sought the esteem of a sage, showing him the accumulated riches and grand deeds. The sage, a mirror of serenity, merely nodded, not captured by the glitter of gold nor by the magnitude of words. He saw beyond, where true value nestled. The sage spoke, with the voice echoing, he who strives to outshine others, in truth, hides his own light. True greatness does not lie in words or treasures, but in humility and in the security of walking carefree among them. The paradox permeates our being, we long to conquer, but when we release the shackles of desire, the universe conspires in our favor. Wu Wei, action without action, teaches that in non-force is the true strength, in non-effort, the path opens. Thus, let the ancient stories and teachings guide us, so that we can dance with the Tao of our lives, where creativity and peace of mind emerge not from hard search, but from smoothly flowing with the river of existence. Indeed, when we release what we desperately try to hold, that is when we become able to hold what really matters. There are patterns and generalizations, of course, but we never know when a child will run into the road or when a driver will make a sudden stop. If we are present and not worried about getting to our destination on time or regretting having taken the wrong path, we will be able to react appropriately and in time to these unpredictable events. But when we are worried or distracted, our ability to respond suffers. In other words, being in the zone means being fully present in the here and now, immersed in the activity itself, free from concerns about the outcome. This state is also often associated with the concept of flow, where a person is completely absorbed and enjoys the process of an activity. Essentially, the law of the reverse effect suggests that when we relax and focus on the process rather than anxiously fixating on the results, success often comes naturally. Unlike excessive effort, which can lead to tension and blockage, surrender allows for fluidity and ease, which are more conducive to achievement. While effort and dedication are undoubtedly important, it is also essential to find balance. This means knowing when to strive and when to let things happen, trusting in one's own knowledge, skills, and creative process. The challenge is to recognize when we are trying too hard and learn to release that tension so that creativity and performance can flow naturally. Life, in its purest essence, is not something to be conquered through brute effort, but rather experienced through the serene flow of existence. Like a river flowing down the mountain, it does not struggle to reach the ocean, it simply follows its path. The law of the reverse effect is a reminder of this natural principle of non-action, which emphasizes action that is not forced, action that is in harmony with the universe. Take the learning process, for example. When a child learns to walk, she is not burdened with theories of movement or muscle dynamics. She simply gets up, falls, and tries again. With each attempt, there is laughter, wonder, innocence, the child is completely present in each step, each fall, each new beginning. And so, in due time, she learns to walk without the weight of conscious effort. Similarly, 
when an artist paints, if he is too focused on how the painting will be received, or whether it will live up to his own expectations, the brush does not move freely. But when lost in color, form, and expression of the moment, the painting emerges as an extension of his inner being, effortless and beautiful in its authenticity. This does not mean that we should abandon all action or responsibility, but that we should find the balance point between doing and being. It is a delicate dance between striving and surrendering, between planning and allowing, between dreaming and awakening to the reality of the present moment. This is where meditation becomes a vital tool, as it teaches us to be present, to observe without judgment, to act without attachment to the outcome. Fear of failure, desire for success, attachment to outcomes, these are the shackles that bind us. When we act not from fear, but from love, not from desire, but from compassion, not from the need for control, but from the willingness to explore and contribute, then we find true freedom and joy in action. The law of the reverse effect is not just a psychological observation, but a spiritual guideline. It invites us to drop the rope of tension, to lighten the weight of expectation, to breathe in the rhythm of life. In each breath, there is potential for a new way of being, a new way of seeing, and a new way of relating to the world. Life is this mysterious dance where each step can lead us to a deeper understanding of our true self and the cosmos that surrounds us. At the heart of the law of the reverse effect is the wisdom that, at the moment we let go, the exact instant we stop trying to force life to conform to our expectations, we begin to flow with the natural current of being. It's like observing a flower. You can't force a flower to bloom by pulling its petals. It blossoms in its own way and in its own time, and its beauty lies precisely in its spontaneity and naturalness. The flower does not strive to impress the world with its beauty, it simply blooms, and the world is naturally captivated. We, as human beings, have much to learn from the flower. Our attempt to control every aspect of our lives, to plan every detail and predict every outcome, is like trying to control the sun or the moon. They move in harmony with deep universal laws that are beyond our immediate understanding. Similarly, when we move in harmony with our inner world and the universe around us, we discover a way of being that is more fulfilling and authentic. This is not an action, it is total action, it is living fully. When we live this way, every moment is an opportunity for self-realization. Every situation, challenging or not, becomes a master, every person we meet, a guru. Life in its entirety is a school, and every experience is a lesson on the path to becoming one with existence. By surrendering to this way of living, we begin to see the reverse effect in action. By not clinging so desperately to the results we desire, paradoxically, we often get closer to them. By letting go of the rigidity of our desires, we open space for creativity, for intuition, for synchronicity. And so, as you walk through life, Remember that the secret is not to fight against the current, but to learn to swim with it. Free yourself from the idea of who you should be and start loving who you are. From this acceptance and self-love is born true freedom, and with this freedom, anything is possible. Life becomes an expression of joy, a song of love, a dance of eternal discovery. And it is in this sacred space that magic really happens.